What is the smallest creature type in Magic the Gathering? I'm talking what creature type has the fewest number of cards. Believe me, I wrote a whole script talking about how germs are likely the smallest in the actual Magic universe, and how it's hard to measure based on power and toughness, because so many cards that are zero zeros and like zero ones are only that small because they have other ways that pump themselves. Here, we're talking about creature types with the least amount of cards, but are still officially recognized by Magic the Gathering. Let's start at 10 cards. What creature types have 10 cards or under? Here we find pockets of creature types that have something in common. Slug, Mole, and Hippo are all real world animals with fewer than 10 cards. Magic probably thought that they'd be useful at some point, but they kind of depend on the context of the world around them. In that same vein, Hippogriff and Demigod are both fantastical creatures and beings with fewer than 10 cards. They both perfectly fit into the world of Magic the Gathering, but they both need a setting that they could actually work in. Beholder and I have fewer than 10 cards, but they could both cross that threshold if they just teamed up. Mystic as a creature type has been replaced by all of the synonyms of spellcaster. Anything it can do, clerics and druids just fill in that gap. Carriers were exclusively Phyrexian creatures and surprisingly didn't get any love in our most recent run-in with the Phyrexians. Then there are a bunch of creature types that Magic made up from scratch just to fill a purpose. They're fully developed, made about 10 of them, and then they just gave up. Slith are one of my favorites. They all have the same shtick and I love them for it. Thalakos and Seltari are both ghost people from the same plane. Zubira are also spirits, but they're from Kamigawa, so they aren't actually dead people spirits. Masticor is the little brother of Manticor, which is an actual mythological animal. Homerid are just crab people, which we've seen what they did recently to our friends the Cephalids. So Homerids, your days are numbered. Metathran were a group of super soldiers made by Urza through eugenics. I wonder why they didn't include that in Brothers War. Azra are a newer creature type that felt like Magic's version of Tieflings, and like they'd use them more, but I guess not. And Beeble is a creature type so despised that the ranking system on how likely it is for a creature type to come back to the game is actually named after them as a sign that they will not be returning. Well, we're under 10, we must go deeper. In this under 5 category, there are three creature types I don't want to spend too much time on. They're Inquisitor, Knoll, and Gith, who are all really only here because they were involved in out-of-universe products. So let's talk about creature types with 5 cards and under. Volfers were mutant abominations that don't have the creature type mutant, or abomination for that matter. Monger is a creature type that I'm desperately begging Magic to bring back. Such a cool design that I think would just be really neat in Commander. This whole cycle is going into my Mario Party cube. Pangolin is a real world animal that is slowly but surely getting more and more cards. By this time three years from now, we might be at a whopping six. Child is a creature type was solely made for the comedy sets and as such only has one card that is actually legal in any format. And Trillobites is just that one Pokemon, Kabuto. How about creature types with four cards? Surkar were a creature type that were only on our first trip to Zendikar and we haven't seen them since. There are four Orok, or four Rock, if you will. They all have pretty neat synergies with each other despite being such a small group. Orgs are from an earlier day of magic when a lot of Red's creatures were just goblins but bigger. Noggle are donkey-headed freaks who I hope we see more of in the Return to Lorwyn, but I totally expect them just to be bumped to donkeys. And Dreadnought was only one card a long time ago, and they had two cards in the Out of Universe products. And then they finally got another Dreadnought as a reference to the first one. Creature types with three cards, Pest only had one for the longest time, and then had two for a while, but is now sitting at three. Starfish consists of a starfish they made with a very cool, albeit out there design. Then they made the Rockstar of the family, and then tried to follow it up with a near carbon copy. Wombat has three cards that art-wise couldn't be the furthest thing from each other. Rabbit Wombat feels like he's trying to sell me a pyramid scheme. Speaking of Rabbit Wombat, I know they errated all creatures that don't tap during combat to have vigilance, but retrospectively, a wombat with rabies being vigilant? Kinda hilarious. My creature type of the day series is how I learned that meerkats are a type of mongoose, and that mongooses are indeed nothing like French geese. Lamassu are weird white flyers. There's so little on the actual mythology for Lamassu that the cards actually show up on the official Wikipedia page. Cuckatrees are just scary chickens, and they'll probably never actually be fire-breathing, for fear of people thinking that magic's just ripping off Good Mythical Morning. And the Nautilus creature type is that one Pokemon, Omanyte. We must go deeper. Creatures with only two cards. Sponge was part of the elite group with only one card for the longest time, but it's ruined by a commander deck. When it comes to Felgrith, I am once again begging that the Elder Felgrith be considered a legendary creature already. For Lamia, it's wild that in all of the cosmos, over all the blind eternities, 
There are two of you, and you look nothing alike. Fractals are just mathematical equations that gain consciousness, and in turn are scarier than most horrors in game. Flag Bearer, they both have the same ability, and it's probably good we don't see them that much anymore, considering how much of a headache it caused when it was released. And Coward is actually a personal favorite creature type of mine. I really don't care for these cards, but the OG Boldwire Intimidator is just so badass. We must go deeper. Creature Tice with only one card. Oyster is really cool tapper, but magic really doesn't make cards like this anymore. There's only one reflection who's on the flip side of an artifact. So I'm still stuck asking the question, when will this reflection show who I am inside? Sables are a real world animal from East Asia, but show up on a plane that's based on a Greek mythology. I guess we know why we've only had the one card. Ferrets I'm honestly surprised didn't show up in Bloomborough. Joven's ferrets being the only ferrets is actually extra funny when you know the background details. Joven was the nickname for one of the designers of the set who just self-inserted himself and a couple references. I don't know if the real Joven actually owned ferrets, but this was the only time they let him design cards, so it shows how willing they are to revisit this creature type. Spawn has so many token versions that are spawns, but only a single card that everyone forgets about. Similarly, Might was only tokens, but the same set those tokens came out in, they decided to make one of them gain a level of importance that I think would go straight to my head if I was given the same treatment. And Walrus is just that one Pokemon. And by one, I mean like two or three. But party people of the jury, you might be thinking, Harrison. We're at one card. Surely we can't go any deeper. Yes, we can, and don't call me Shirley. Creature types that are exclusively tokens. Now, some might say this is cheating, but tokens aren't cards, so they are sitting at zero. Balloon objectively should not be a creature type. There's a lot of stuff that happened in Unfinity that should not have happened, and this is not high priority on that list. Germ is the smallest creature type physically, the smallest creature type in power and toughness, and is so small, doesn't have actual cards. Servos are just thopters that didn't sell out, man. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating and it gets everywhere. And I don't entirely understand it being living beings. Inklings are the third house mascot from Strixhaven to show up in this video, and the second Nintendo property. I'd ask what a Graveborn is, but I'm thinking they don't even know. Survivors are the type of creature that could logistically show up in a lot more sets, but I think Magic actually forgot about it for the longest time, and then eventually decided to do a fun callback and never talk about it again. And then we have Tentacle. I get that's an extension of a bigger monster and it's really neat with the Ludo narrative and all, but I don't like it. If I play a board wipe that kills all the Krakens, why are their arms still alive? So that's it. Or is it? We must go deeper yet again. The last batch of 10 creature types I'll mention here are all token creature types that all independently have a single card that makes them. Magic has over 300 creature types and 10 of them, over 3% of creature types, are tokens that are only made by a single card. We've hit bedrock, folks. Let's look. Phantasmal Sphere is the only card that makes reference to the creature type Orb. Who's up pondering their orb? This one you don't really want to ponder because it only benefits your opponent. I have a group here called the Avites. The token generators are Tetravis, Triskelevis, and Pentavis for the rest of us. They respectively then make Tetravites, Triskelevites, and Pentavites. I get that they're supposed to be making little robot guys, but there has to be a better way. Pincher has to be one of my favorites on this list. You can tell a lot about somebody from what they think when they first see Summoning Station. If you're like me, the first thing I notice is this weird looking teddy bear freak that I just adore. If you like the half of the comments on a video I've made previously about this card, you think this goes infinite with a sack outlet. I'll spoil the fun. The token may be colorless, but it isn't an artifact. Word I won't pronounce correctly, Home Guard produces 0-1 deserters if it attacks or blocks. Deserters are just the type of people I want to build my magic army with. I'm honestly surprised deserters survived the grand creature type update considering we have had two creatures since then that both have deserter in their name, but not in the type despite magic usually following a rule that if a creature type shows up in a card's name, it should show up in the card typing, but magic can be weird like that sometimes. The next one is Surf, probably one of the more popular token creature types with only a single card. Still praying for the day where we get a Surf Rebellion set. Sculptures are made by Doom Skull Artisan. I can't actually claim that joke. I made a video talking about sculptures before, and Marco in the comments came up with that one. Solid joke, 10 out of 10. Shout out to Marco for that one. He's consistently been commenting on my videos forever now. You're a real one, Marco. Splinter and the green card it rode in on are just wild. Generating tokens that have cumulative upkeep, flyers in green, direct damage in green. Hey, human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. 
the final creature type that belongs to this exclusive group of creature types with no cards but only a single generator is Prism. They're basically just bad treasure. You can't even sacrifice most changelings to this card because it specifically requires them to be Prism tokens. I'll tell you something card, there's no such thing as a non-Prism token in Magic. All right, I've started yelling at cards, so I think it's time for me to end the video. Thanks for watching. For the first 24 hours, I will be responding to any and all comments. After that, I won't be responding to anything. So if you want a response, get in quick, or you gotta be faster for my future videos. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to bolt your birds.